Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today, let's talk about a couple of bills. The first, the debt ceiling bill has passed. And what are the implications? We'll also talk about the Dignity Bill or Dignity Act of 2023. A lot of people have asked me to make a video on this. So let's talk about it. And also what's happening with the H-1B multiple filings petitions. And there are also important topics at the end of the video. So do watch the video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration and lifestyle related videos for US and Canada. I am not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs, before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now check out the links in the description because those are affiliate links. And if you use those links, you will get a little bit of a discount. And also while you are down there, a like would be appreciated. Now recently took a trip to the Big Apple, New York City and here are a couple of the highlights. It was an awesome day to walk around and take a train ride. There were also a street fest and street vendors that we enjoyed a lot and a lot was happening at the Times Square as well. The Big Apple should be on your bucket list if you haven't traveled. It's my second most favorite destination after, of course, my hometown, Boston. Okay, so let's talk about the bipartisan debt ceiling deal. It is one of the most consequential bills for this year, at least. So it was imperative to pass this bill by the House and the Senate, or it is imperative to pass this bill by the House and the Senate and signed into a law before 5th of June, because that is the deadline put forward by, by the Fed. Now, what this means is US keeps borrowing money in order to pay its bill. So any government funding that is done, be it social security, be it running of the administration, all the different branches of administration, everything is paid through a debt. It's a very complicated topic. I don't know who owes to whom. Apparently US has a trillion dollars or 31 trillion dollars debt. What this bill does is every two years or every year, they have to pass a rule to actually increase the debt ceiling so that they can take on more debt to pay its bill. And now it is, it is important for it to pass because if it doesn't pass, the rating of the United States as a credit, the credit rating of the United States actually takes a hit and it takes a hit and impacts everybody living in the United States in terms of your mortgage rates, in terms of capacity to borrow between the lenders and financial institutions. It has huge impact on the economy. So last night they passed this bill in the House and today or tomorrow it may pass in the Senate and it will go to the President's desk. While it was a precarious situation, now I think we are past that. So now let's talk about our second bill that is in the chatter. I wasn't planning to make a video on this bill, the Dignity Act of 2023, but I will tell you why. This bill, the Dignity Act of 2023, has been introduced. It is the most comprehensive immigration bill that has been brought to the Congress in the recent times. This bill has everything that you have ever wished for in terms of US immigration. So if you can't think of what you had wished for, don't worry about it, it's in the bill. Now let's take a look at it. Now this bill stands for dignity for immigrants while guiding our nations to ignite and deliver American Dream Act of 2023. It is a mouthful and it covers a lot of elements. Let's jump into it. It's basically broadly divided into five different sections. The border security, the American dream and promise, improving seasoned guest workers or opportunities, American Agricultural Dominance Act and American Prosperity and Competitiveness. Now, as we work, you'll also notice that this impacts employment based immigration as well. Let's look at the major components what all covered in this bill. Now, mind you, this bill is nowhere near getting approved. It hasn't even been voted on in the Congress or in the House or in the Senate. So it has long ways to go. At this point of time, we are just going to talk about it for information purpose. I'll give you my thoughts on this bill after we look into the details. Now, Representative Maria Salazar of uh, Florida introduced the Dignity Act, HR 3599, in the House of Representatives on May 23rd, 2023. 
This is a bipartisan effort to strengthen the border security in the United States, provide undocumented individuals with an opportunity to obtain legal status. Provide undocumented individuals with an opportunity to obtain legal status if they meet certain requirements and also update aspects of US legal immigration system. Now this bill has somewhat bipartisan support but all in all everybody agrees that US immigration system needs a reform from ground up and this bill will provide exactly that. Now let's look at the first section border security for America. This is the first section and what it will do is it will implement more barriers in terms of technology and in terms of um, manpower at the border security. It authorizes about 25 billion to do this. It will also increase the security at the port of entries. It will increase the personals. It will uh, improve its biometric um, exits. Basically, when people are leaving the United States, it will track them as well. It also includes infrastructure funding. Now, another thing that this bill does is asylum reform. It will establish five humanitarian campuses. It will uh, it will speed up the initial screening process down to 15 days, which is incredible. Secondary screening and asylum determination within 60 days. Referral to the immigration judge as quickly as possible. And then so many other things that will speed up the asylum process. This will greatly enhance and speed up the asylum process. What else is in here? There are visa security and integrity uh, clauses in it. Transnational criminal organization checks mandatory e-verify system to be implemented and development of Central America. So there will it will have negotiations with the Central American nations how to reduce the inflow of migrants and how to improve the conditions in their own countries so that the migrants don't find a need to travel upward north to the United States. Another section is American dream and promise. What does this do? This will help the dreamers. Dreamers are the undocumented immigrants that have come to the United States as a children. Now this bill will provide a pathway to the legal status to all of these DACA recipients. It is said that there are about 1.9 million dreamers and roughly 600,000 DACA recipients that live in the United States. Now it will provide some, provided they meet some conditions, if they have lived in the United States for more than 10 years, it will allow them to legally work in the United States by issuing them the permit and, and also an advance parole to travel outside the United States. And to qualify as a conditional permanent residence, an uh, individual must have continuously lived in the United States for three years, entered the United States 18 years of age and also have graduated in the United States. The Dreamers and DACA recipients can remove the conditional basis of their status to become LPR or green card holders if they have achieved one of the following. Obtain a college or graduate degree, serve at least three years in US military, are employed and working for at least four years, and they, they just have to pay the fees of 495 and that will get them into the line for getting a green card. So this is an incredible opportunity for undocumented immigrants that have already uh, that are already living in the United States. So now this is nothing new. There is always those bills that have come up in the past for undocumented dreamers. Now let's see what happens with this. There is also provision for TPS holders, temporary protection status holders to get a pathway to, uh, to the green card. Now actual dignity program, what does it do is it would allow undocumented immigrants in the United States to earn legal status if they pass criminal background check pay back the taxes owed and meet some other requirements. Now, the participant can pay about $5,000 on the seven years of program in check in with the DHS every two years and remain in good public standing. Those are the conditions that they are uh, allowing these individuals to apply. Mm -hmm. Now there are provisions for the guest workers. It's specifically H2B program. So there is a cap relief for the H2B returning workers. It also provides relief to the agricultural workers workers that are temporary workers coming to the United States from these countries. It will also allow them to apply for adjustment of status after a certain duration. Now here is another one, American prosperity and competitiveness. What does that mean? This bill updates the aspects of the US immigration system with an aim towards protecting family unity, reducing backlog and improving employment based opportunities. Now this is something that you might be interested in. The first one is spouses or children of an employer, LPR. This bill would exempt spouses and minor children of lawful permanent residents from current family preference green card caps. Okay, 
The second one is elimination of backlog. The legal visa backlog is reduced to a maximum of 10 years. Individuals who have been waiting in the backlog for more than 10 years will get a green card automatically. They will be exempt from the cap, which most of the Indian citizens who have been waiting in the backlog would fall into this category. Per country cap removal. Now this also talks about uh, the bill raises the green card per country cap from 7% to 15% of the total number of employment based or family based sponsors visas each year. So it does not totally eliminate the per country cap but it raises it from uh, 7 years which is current to be, uh, to be 15 years. This bill protects documented dreamers from aging out status once they turn 21 due to the visa delays. There is a moment going on with the documented dreamers and this will increase this is a great news that it has been included in this program. F1 visas for international students. A bill will change F, F student visa reserved for international student to be dual intent. This is incredible and this is going to be big if passed because currently F visa is not dual intent visa. So in the sense that if you go to the consulate and say I need a student visa but I also have an intention to permanently reside in the United States, you would immediately be denied of the visa because of the dual intent but this bill will change that it will introduce a dual intent yeah. now this is another one that this bill will exclude the derivative applicants from the employment visa numerical cap limits so this is incredible because because currently what is happening is if you have a family of five then five visa numbers are used up that by that single family even though the primary applicant is only one now what this bill will do is for a family, it will only use one visa number and not the number of family members. This will greatly release a lot of visa numbers for individual families than individuals. And this is just a summary of the bill. The actual texts will have a lot of the things that you have wished for in the past. It also talks about the recapture of the dates, recapture of the visa numbers and so on and so forth. So if and when this bill comes to the floor and if there is any progress on this bill, I'll definitely make sure to make a video on this. So stay tuned to my channel. So I know for sure that some of you are interested in stock trading, day trading, buying cryptocurrencies. I want to present you Webull. Webull is a trading platform. It allows you to buy stock. It allows you to buy options, do options trading, and also it allows you to buy cryptocurrency. Webull 9 was released with a brand new home and market page, asset page, and economic calendar. Also, Webull cash management was launched with 5.8% API with no fees attached and no minimum balance and unlimited withdrawals. This is amazing. This coming May, new Webull USA users can still enjoy 5.8% APY and gift up to 12 free stocks when making an initial deposit of any amount. Each is valued between $3 and $3,000. Feel free to take advantage of this. Join through my link and you will get those free stocks. Let's move on to our next topic. Now, I don't want to be negative, but in reality, this bill may not pass, in my opinion. It is just a laundry list of everything and it is very hard to do this comprehensive immigration in a divided Congress. If the Congress was united in the sense that if Democrats had the Congress, entire Congress and the President, it would have been a different story, but it's not the case. The House is with the Republicans and the Senate is with the Democrats. So in this scenario, I find it very hard to believe that this bill will pass as it is. Now, piecemeal deal might happen, like some of the components, if pulled out, into separate bills may pass. That is the more realistic situation. But this at least tells that there is a push for this huge immigration reform in the United States, which is good news. Now let's move on to our next topic, which is H-1B multiple findings. Now I have made a special video. If I haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend watching that video. What are the implications for the applicants who have submitted multiple petitions and have got approval on one of them? You have to be very careful which approval you got. You have to make that approval a case, a legitimate case in order for it to be approved because USCIS is going to scrutinize all these applicants in a big way. Now, people who are already in the United States, which are maximum number that are applying from F1, going from F1 to H1 or things like that, they may have a greater possibility of uh, getting their approval if legitimately filed. But at the border, they are having different issues. If you have filed multiple petitions from say sitting in India and you have one of them approved 
or one of them selected you may have hard time convincing the visa officer at the consulate that your intent or your you did not misrepresent i talk about misrepresentation in my last video if you haven't watched that do watch it and if you are in this if you are in this situation and if you haven't watched it do watch it because i cover that topic comprehensively there is a chance that lot of people who have their um, h1b petition selected in the lottery but had filed for multiple petitions may be scared to even apply for the full petition and i can understand that and due to that there might be a need for a second lottery that might come in the future now don't make the se same mistake that you made in the first lottery by submitting multiple petitions only submit the one that is valid and that is legitimate now some people are asking about uh, if i get a green card how long can i stay outside of the united states having the green card now the whole purpose of green card is being permanently resident in the united states that's the reason uscis has given you that green card now if you plan to live outside the united states for an extended time then you may risk losing your green card so few months 2 3 months or 4 months 5 months 6 months is okay as long as you can explain it but as you as you start approaching one year of stay outside of the united states you have to be extremely cautious because after one year of stay outside of the united states you could automatically abandon your green card in that situation there are other ways to reinstate the green cards there is a petition that you can file but that's a hassle you don't want to go there if you have received your green card after such an effort you want to maintain it so make sure you don't stay outside the united states for extended period of uh, period of time in order to maintain your green card so that's really what i wanted to cover in this video if you have any other topic in your mind do put down in the comment section below because i do read them and that's where i get most of my ideas for my next videos and if you haven't subscribed do subscribe hit the like button and i'll see you in the next one